about the, the uh, it, it shows like there's vulnerability, right? There, there is the the idea that there may have been defensive wounds, but at least one person didn't see it coming. Right. As far as we know. Mm -hmm. We yeah. know. Yeah. As far as we know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, according to what the coroner. Right. In, in terms of um, somebody getting into the house, they, they keep saying no sign of forced entry. Right. Do you think that this was somebody that was known to them? I think that that's kind of an impossible question. Yeah. I think it's a very popular yeah. house. As a mother, I feel like they know. I do. I've always felt that way. Nobody has told me that anyway. Just I just feel like, yeah. I mean, this is a college town. It's a small town. I feel that. I feel the girls knew this person. But we don't know that. Okay, yeah. We don't well, we know. Yeah, we actually don't know that. Don't know. I just feel it in my heart that that they knew the person. And I've always felt that way. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I've always said they knew him. They knew him. They knew him. Yeah. They knew him. Yeah. I just don't feel like this was like some rando just driving through Moscow, happened to stop by their house. I will say um, um, they did have a keypad on their front door. Uh, and it was a very popular house. So I, I know for a fact that people who weren't necessarily roommates of the house did have that code. Sign of fourth century doesn't necessarily mean that they were invited in. The people that survived were on the first floor. Um, to our knowledge. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if, if they come in through the keypad, is it possible to to bypass a room on the first floor it and is. go up to the second floor and third Correct. floor? Yes, yes. There's also a, a, a door in the back that just leads directly to the middle. Um, <clears throat> me? I, it's not real yet. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a bit in denial. Um, I'm hoping for justice. That's why I'm trying to switch myself into that mode to try to find some justice. That's yeah. where I'm at. I get it. See, uh, Olivia? Yeah, I just, um, I just know my sister, she was a hard worker and, um, just sitting in my bed and crying myself to sleep isn't okay. going to do her any justice. And that's not what she'd want me to do. She'd yeah. want me to stay active and, uh, and doing what I can to spread her message and hope that we can find this suspect or suspects. And that's how I feel. I get it. I get it. She's got a great smile. We keep showing that picture. Um, I know your family's been frustrated with the investigation so far, understandably so. Here we are a week and a half out, really not much information about this, does not appear to be a suspect. Uh, tell me, uh, Olivia, what, what specifically you've been frustrated with, because you, you did your own work here, for instance. You, you found video of the food truck, for example, uh, where, where two of the victims were seen the same night as this killing. Yeah, I would say, I think that obviously this is extremely personal for us, and we treated it that way from the very get-go. Um, I know how valuable those first 48, 72 hours are. Um, and I can only hope that the police also know how valuable that is and that they have a lot of information there that just isn't public right now. Um, I will say the one lingering frustration I have, um, I know it's semantics, but my sisters got home at 156. It wasn't 145. I know. He's been very outsp outspoken in support of Jack. He's Kaylee's ex-boyfriend uh, and on the moscow police website though has been very outs outspoken in support of jack he's kaylee's ex-boyfriend uh, and on the moscow police website though moscow police website he is not listed notably as someone who has been cleared in the investigation T to your knowledge is that significant no um i i don't personally think so because i think that there's the entire rest of the world that's also not on that list of people who have been cleared, right. um, including Maddie's boyfriend, including any associates of Xana or Ethan that might not be involved. Um, I, I don't find that significant at all. Katie's brother's reaction was weird. I don't think Jack was cleared for him and his father in the beginning. It's quite odd. She taught me how to be a dad. Xana Kernodal's sister Jasmine remembers her as someone who can lift up a room. She was so positive and lighthearted and understood the gift of life more than anyone I know. Xana was originally from Avondale, Arizona. Her family later moved to Post Falls, Idaho. She played volleyball, soccer, and track at Post Falls High School. Xana went on to attend the University of Idaho. She pledged the Pi Beta Phi sorority and was majoring in marketing. 
According to an obituary in the Bonner County Daily Bee, Zana loved listening to electronic dance music and going on family trips with her sister and father. She was my baby sister, but she was so much wiser and experienced so much more in life than I ever have. She never let an opportunity pass her by and enjoyed all the moments she had. At the University of Idaho, Zana lived in a rental house with five other women. One of her roommates, Madison Mogan, was also her co-worker at the Mad Greek restaurant. I know she loved living in her house in Moscow with her friends. I would hear so many stories about her and her roommates and it made me so happy to know she had such great friendships. She was dating Ethan Chapin, her first boyfriend. They were always so happy and the way she would talk and smile about him was something I've never seen her do before. She truly loved him so much and I know he had so much love for her. They had something so special and everyone around them knew. And Dana's loss has left those around her heartbroken. Santa, you will not be forgotten. You have impacted so many lives and have given people so much love. I hope I can make you proud and try to leave an impact on this world and on people like you did. No way. And it's, it's, it's a very different, it's a very different. 2 a.m. is a dark hour, I can tell you that. <laughs> I realize it's never going to go away. And it's, it's, it's a very different. It's a very different. 2 a.m. is a dark hour, I can tell you that. <laughs> These are the pictures Jovita is watching on his phone. I believe it's around 2.15, 2.20 a.m. So I'm wondering if this was happening in Lindley. Like you can see, is Jovito is for just like Said was watching the picture of Kaylee sitting in the bed sitting on the bed allegedly and other crime scene pictures people gathered around them Zana Zana This is for fair use purpose. Chaos Sector put this up four days ago and she believed that this was all happening around 2.20 in the morning. I was wondering if this could be linked with what was happening in the grub truck around that timing. That's when we hear the crowd yelling, Zana, Zana. So I'm starting to really believe that something could have happened in Linda Lee. Could this have been related to what was happening in the grub truck? So this was all happening in Linda Lee. So when we heard, stop it, stop. Could it have been coming from Linda Lee, the female yelling?
Now I'm starting to understand. Let me explain my theory. The Banfield stop where Said was watching the pictures of allegedly Kaylee sitting on the bed, like you can see, was happening at 2.58. So it was just like I always said, it was separate targets. It was separate, two separate incidents. Kaylee and Maddie were on life together and the couple were on life together. They made us believe that it all happened at one place and that Kaylee and Maddie were alive first. The grub truck around 2.15, 2.20 is when they're yelling Zana. Zana and, and E is name. So that means something was happening to them in Linda Lane much earlier. At least 40 minutes, 25 minutes earlier then 2.58. At 2.50, two is the last call made to Jack D. And then you hear a female yelling, stop it, stop, at 2.56. So Katie and Mary were on live later. I hope her parents come across this because this is Literally, the crime scene picture of Kaylee and Maddie. I'm saying it with mindfulness. You can see somebody sitting on the bed just like they described recently on the interview. So this was the incident number two. What Saeed is watching. That's Kaylee and Maddie. We heard a female yelling, stop it, stop. At 2.56, we see the four figures running at 3.12. And we see these three young gentlemen stopped at the Banfield stop, which started at 2.54, I believe. We have Saeed there too, watching the crime scene pictures. I'm sure he's watching Kaylee and Maddie's one. But Jovita on the grub truck are watching the pictures of Zana and E. It is so heartbreaking. Let me know what you'll think about it. So let me repeat it again. Let me summarize this. I always said that there was two incidents And I'm still saying that the couple were unlived around 2.15. That's the reason I've always said that E, his mother, says 2 a.m. is the hardest time for them all. I think her family she needs, definitely. Then we have Eva. We have Eva who said in an interview to ABC News, there's two, two separate clips of the same interview they show. They edit it. There's one part you hear her clearly saying, I thought it was, a, I think it's an accident. So I decided, I, I, she said, I thought, Let's not panic. It could be an accident. I called Kaylee and nobody answered her phone. Obviously, it was 10 a.m. That's exactly what she said. How could she know what happened at 10 a.m.? Zana's sister, Jazzy, Jasmine, was called in the morning and she called her father. Hunter was called first. Hunter Johnson, and he called Hunter E his brother and E his sister. There was a sea of people, ocean of people, standing in front of the house when the police came. Some were already inside. 
People went upstairs and found Kayla and Mahdi alive. They did recipes. So it shows you that everyone's been in the crime scene. I want to know who are the four figures who are running at 3.12. I want to know what Saeed is watching, where he got these crime scene pictures from. I want to know what Joe Vito is watching. He's supposed to be a career advisor teacher, apparently, in the University of Idaho. And he's talking so unmindfully and so unprofessional about Kaylee and Maddie, saying they were drunk and they were zombies. All these people need to be investigated because there's three unidentified male DNAs roaming around. There was a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra roaming around this area around 3 to 4 a.m. So why are they getting there confused with Brian Christopher Koberger's 2015 Elantra? Dylan was supposed to be sleeping in the first floor and so was Bethany. That was what was said in the start. The chief said, the surviving roommates are not witnesses, they were just there. What changed? Look at this picture that Saeed is watching. Look at the, not the picture of the female sitting upstairs, which is most likely Kaylee, may she rest in peace. Look at the picture downstairs. You can see a man with a full mask or with a painting on his face. He's trying to conceal and hide his face. What was going on? These people want us to believe that Brian Christopher Kohlberger did this crime by himself like he's some kind of hitman. This doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. Have a lovely day, guys. May the four victims rest in peace. Condolence to the families. May the correct justice be served. I hope the families come across this clip because I've been showing this for almost a year now from last March. It is important. I hope Ann Taylor sees this because Brian Christopher Koberger deserves a fair trial and so does the four victims. They want the correct justice to be served, not the wrong justice. Something smells rotten in the state of Denmark, like they say. These young boys were up to no good, and one of them is wearing the van shoes. That is important because it's in the eye for David. Have a lovely day.